Welcome back to the channel, I'm Michael Bryan, and in this video, I wanna show you guys the three best screen recording apps that you can use for your YouTube channel totally free. Now, there are also upgraded versions for these, and I'll talk about those later on in the video, but assuming you want a free application that you can use to record your screen on your computer for your YouTube channel, these are three great apps out there. Now, I'm not gonna present these in any particular order. It's not gonna be like three, two, one, and skip over to one just to see what the best one is for, you know, just overall, because I really think that each of these could be better for a different user. So I'm gonna explain each of the three and who would be best to use them. So for example, the first one I think would be best if you are somebody who's working with a group of people, or maybe somebody who just doesn't wanna fuss around to computer and you want it something as simple as possible. Before I get any farther into this video, I wanna say if this is your first time here and you're looking to grow your influence on social media, so Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever it is, consider going down and clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you don't miss more uploads that my brother and I are putting out. We're putting out videos every single week, totally free just to help you grow your accounts. So jumping right into that, the first one I wanna show you guys is called Tiny Take. Now Tiny Take is totally free and is definitely the easiest out of these three to actually set up and use for the first time. And it's very, very intuitive, a very simple interface, but there are some limitations to this and I'll explain those in just one second. So some of the really convenient things about this one that make it so easy is you just click on this giant green button right here and it gives you a bunch of options. If you wanna capture a region of your screen, you can easily do that. You don't have to capture the whole window and edit and post proc and you know crop it down to size. Instead you can just say, you know, let's capture a region or capture the full window, capture the full screen, whatever you want to do, or have a webcam coming in. So really, really simple, very intuitive right there, uh, and it's very easy to use. Now, to really see some of the limitations with the free version, you can go down and click Go Premium, and they make a nice little table right there to show you the different versions they offer and what benefits there are for each of them. So using this with the free version does limit you to five minutes. Personally, I think that's not a big deal for a lot of YouTubers starting off. Uh, if you're making tutorial style, style videos where you're going to be showing like an Excel workbook for 15 minutes at a time, you could probably break it into three different cuts anyway, and it really wouldn't be hindering your video by any means. Now, if you really want to have that longer recording limit, so if you want 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 60 minutes, you might want to upgrade to one of the other versions. Of course, the other two apps I'm going to talk about later on in this video actually don't have any recording limit, so if that's the case, skip forward a few seconds and you'll be seeing the next one I'll talk about. So also you have, uh, this is for personal use only is what they say, so, so you can't be using it for a commercial commercial use, uh, look into that one uh, a little bit more before you actually start using that if you have any questions about whether or not you are commercial. The storage limit is two gigabytes, and that means there is cloud storage for this, so you can actually save your videos online. And this is where I think this one really shines. If you have a team of people, if you're working with two or three different creators, uh, and you have one communal channel, you might wanna upgrade to like the standard version or something where you can all take screen recordings on your own computers or just save all your clips into one drive like this. Uh, and it just makes it a little easier to use. Now, since I just accidentally said OneDrive, that also points out that you can instead use you know, Google Drive or OneDrive and save all your files there for free if that's something you wanna do instead and have more than two gigabytes. Of course, you also have an online web gallery with this. So overall, this is a decent app to use and I really like how simple it is. That's the reason that I think Tiny Take really shines is the simplicity on this. The next one is actually Flashback Express, which has a few little hiccups and I'll talk about those in a second, but it's sort of the next step up from Tiny Take. So Tiny Take is a really easy one to use. This is a little trickier to use, but you don't have the recording limit. You're not limited to five or 15 minutes uh, without upgrading. And then this also doesn't really push, you know, a bunch of different tiers of subscription towards you. Instead, they have one premium version, which is a one-time buy of, I think it's about $50. Uh, and that doesn't actually change how you record anything. So you can use this and have the full recording features, but then the upgrade is just gonna give you their editor and the ability to save in any file format. So I save an MP4 anyway, so it's not a huge deal to me. I use this one for free all the time and it's really no problem. So when it pops up, you'll see right here, it can say record your screen or open a recording and then see some tutorials over there. I recommend checking out a few tutorials if this is your first time using Flashback Express, which I assume if you're watching this video, it would be your first time using it. So just click on record screen and here you start to see my first complaint is that everything opens up in a new window and sometimes if you close out or minimize a window, it'll disappear and you don't know where it is and then you open it up again and it says the window is already open. So it's a little weird like that and also when you're recording, 
This is a pro and a con, so if I just start recording and I say record, it'll be recording my screen and this will actually go away and I have to hit control S or control shift S to stop my recording. Now when you're done recording, it pops up and asks you if you want to review it, you want to save it or you want to just get rid of it, uh, which is pretty nice that you can actually review it before you save it, especially if it's a longer video, because sometimes longer videos take a lot of space up on a laptop and they might take you know a little while to actually save uh, and open and delete later and move them around and copy. So it's better just to preview things before you actually save them. I like that about this app quite a bit. So here you'll see you have three different options. You can record the full screen, the region, or just the window. Pretty nice that you have those options right there. Uh, and then when you actually go down, you can choose the different inputs. And actually, I just want to go over and show you right here. Scheduling is pretty nice that you can schedule recording for the future. If you're wondering why you might want to do this, let's just think of maybe if there's like a high school football game that's going on, you know, on their website or whatever, and it's going to be airing live and you want to go to the game, but you want to record it. Maybe your son's in the football game or something. You can do a scheduled recording so that when you come home later, it'll record that. Just something, you, I don't know, maybe that's why you'd want to use that. I don't actually know of any other reasons to use a scheduled recording, but it's a cool feature they have nonetheless. So who would be best to use Flashback Express? In my opinion, I think Flashback Express offers, you know, a very similar range of function as the next one I'm going to talk about. Although having the editor in here is pretty nice. If somebody's on a low budget and you want to spend $50 as a one-time buy, and you're going to be doing a lot of screen recording, maybe longer screen recordings, you know, longer than five minutes, I recommend using Flashback Express and maybe paying that extra $50 to use the editor with Flashback Express. I, now, I haven't tried the editor yet, but if anyone out there has tried it, please comment down below and let me know what you think of it, what are the pros and cons of the editor, and is it actually worth the extra $50? Now, if I was just starting off, I would probably try spending $50 on this before going out and subscribing to like Premiere Pro and paying, you know, like hundreds of dollars a year for that. So lastly, I think the one that I use the most and I've actually been using for this entire video to record everything is OBS Studio. It seems to sort of be like an industry standard. A lot of people like this for the versatility. Now it is much less easy to use compared to the other ones. It's, it's not as simple and you're gonna have a little bit more of a noisy interface so you have to know what you're doing. I actually made a tutorial about how to use this. I'll link it right up there. If you wanna use OBS, I recommend almost anybody who just wants to record your screen. So say you're any scale, a very large professional or a very, very early beginner, OBS is a great program to use when you're trying to do live streaming or just screen recording. Uh, and it's great, you won't have an editor, you won't have the really simple interface on there, but there is a lot more versatility. There's more, it's a more powerful program in my opinion, where you can record your screen uh, and, and it works really, really well. Now, if you're using a laptop like mine, so I have the HP Spectre right here, just really quickly, I wanna show you, I had a black screen issue with my laptop where it would not show up with what I was trying to record. And all you actually have to do is go down. And so if I say OBS right there, you have to open the file location and then when you right click on the actual program, you can instead decide to run on the integrated graphics. So the problem with this was that there was a second graphics processor on here. If your laptop has that, make sure you go and check and try to run with the other graphics processor. It might make your program work a little better and not just record a black screen. So to conclude, out of these three different apps, I think the first one, Tiny Take, was great if you're trying to just really simply get into it. They say they can record 4K. I haven't actually tried to record 4K on my screen yet, uh, but it's really nice how you can very easily, you know, just open it up and start recording right away. There's no setup, like you'd have a lot more setup with OBS, for example. There's almost no setup with Tiny Take, and it's great that you can have that online, you know, very well integrated storage if you're working with a team. Now, Flashback Express is pretty great for anyone who wants to use their editor. Maybe have to upgrade the extra $50 to do that, but I think that's probably a good investment if you're just getting started off and you don't already have an editor, uh, and maybe if you don't have a free one yet, I recommend maybe checking out the Flashback Express editor. Thirdly, we have OBS, which I think is almost anybody else out there. If you don't know, if you're in doubt between which of these three to use, I recommend OBS is your go-to to check it out. That's the one I've been using for a long time and I've had almost no problems with it whatsoever. It's a great program. And as I said, none of these have watermarks. These are all great free programs to use. But let me know which one you decide to use for your YouTube channel. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching guys. And if you've been watching this far and haven't subscribed yet, please go down and consider clicking the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>